Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our class. I'm just going to um, admit if everyone in the room and then I can start with our introductions. But we have uh, 74 people registered today. So it's going to be a very, very interesting class. And I'm very excited for what's going on. So we're 25 and counting. But um, please, um, while we're just letting people in, uh, feel free to use the chat box and let us know um, where you're from, whether you own a Thermomix or not, uh, which model it is, or if you're waiting for your Thermomix. Um, I will be coordinating the class. Um, for many of you who are my customers, you'll know I have broken my leg, um, <laughs> hence why I'm, well, sitting down and I have my wonderful team who are running the class for me or cooking for me. Uh, feel free to turn on your cameras um, because that's um, really a lovely way for us to see um, your reactions. And, um, and use the chat box. If you do have a question, feel free to use the hands up box um, because I will be coordinating that um, as well um, as we run the class. But um, yes, just let's wait for everyone to join and then see how you all are on this wonderful um, Sunday morning. So yes, and I recognize a lot of the names. So hi, Lisa has a TM6 from Weir Weybridge, Avni TM5. Um, yes, Monica, of course, you have the TM5 and the 6. Um, some are having camera issues. That's absolutely fine. Um, we don't need to worry about that. West London TM6. Uh, oh, no gadget yet. Oh, very exciting. Okay. Um, so some newbies. So we'll definitely see what you um, can do. Um, hello from Germany. So we have people from all over. Uh, uh, um, I was going to say the UK. And then suddenly Christine popped up and I know she's in Mumbai. So we really truly have an international class today. So uh, welcome. Right, it's uh, it's five past um, 11, so I'm going to just start and we will, I'll admit people as they come in um, um, and hopefully everyone can hear me, so that's not a, a problem at all. So welcome um, and uh, Qatar as well. Hello, Kath. Um, as well. So yeah, you can truly see that our, our reach as a team goes far and wide. So welcome. My name is Ankita Stopper and I am a Thermomix advisor and team leader uh, for many years. I've been demonstrating now for 14 years, uh, just two months shy of my daughter's age. And joining us today are two of my team members, uh, Fabrizio Botta and uh, Francesco Stia. I uh, hope I pronounced those correctly. I never actually pronounced their surnames very much, um, who are both Italian and are um, cooking today some Italian classics with a little twist um, on, on what they are going to make as well. So we're going to be chopping and changing a little bit here. Um, Fabrizio will um, start by making us a drink and an introduction to um, a, a pasta dish. Uh, Francesco will then make a, a sauce and then we'll go back to Francesco to finish his pasta 
um, and then we'll get dessert from Francesco. Um, feel free to use the chat box. Like I said, I will be um, manning that and um, really enjoy yourself as well. So um, let's start and we're going to go over to um, Fran Fabrizio first. Yes, it's me. Hi, Akita. Hi, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, so, welcome to this Italian class today. You see in the morning, red, white, and, um, and green to celebrate our um, Italian flag colors. Um, yes, so today we're going to start with a nice and um, refreshing drink, a pure Italian style. It's a uh, cafe shakerato. So, it's like, think of it uh, like a um, coffee uh, frappe. Okay, so it starts off very nicely and very easily. Uh, we're going to make some um, ice and sugar. So we're using about uh, 30 grams of sugar, says the Thermomix uh, recipe, but you can, of course, uh, reduce the amount of sugar. Now, what I'm doing for this recipe, because the recipe, um, as it is on cookie dough, is for four people, uh, I'm just going to have it and just do half for two people only. So it's about uh, 15 grams of sugar, but I will go for, for 10. Um, I think that's just enough, yeah. And then for those of you who don't actually have a thermomix just yet, um, if you didn't know, you can actually make ice and sugar in the thermomix. So all you do is place the uh, measuring cup on top and then 10 seconds, speed 10. And that will give you icy sugar. So no need to buy icy sugar from the supermarket. You have it ready in your thermomix in just a few seconds. Okay. So another money saver. Okay, we have some uh, ice cubes for that. I'm going to get my thermo server, which is one of the thermomix accessories that you can purchase online at the moment um, on the Warwick in shop. Um, the thermal server is designed to keep your food hot and your food cold. So as you can see, I've got ice cubes in there. It's nice to also store ice cream or salt, but you can actually keep it in the freezer. Um, so it's very nice and handy. Yeah. So I'm going to put just about three ice cubes. And because as I said, I'm doing uh, a recipe for two people, not for four. So, okay. And then 150 grams of um, espresso. This one I made earlier, obviously. And uh, here we go. Okay, and then put the lid back on. And uh, just eight seconds. Okay, speed eight. Okay, so my drink is ready. It's beautifully done. So all the recipe is asking me to do now is to actually filter it uh, using a, a sieve. But what I'm doing, because we're using all the thermomix accessories, I'm actually using the simmering basket as a strainer, as a sieve. So it's really nice. The way we do that is because we want to uh, leave all the foam inside the, the bowl and just put the coffee. Okay, so that's one there. And all recipes um, will be sent to you and cookie do links after the class. So if anyone's joining late, uh, don't worry, we will send you um, the, the recipes and links. Um, and also we are recording this so anyone can replay it um, later for some of the hints and tips. Okay, basket goes back in the, in the bowl. And that's ready, ready to be enjoyed. It's very nice and refreshing, I said, just eight seconds, I'm going to taste it on your behalf. <laughs> mm. 
Mm. And this is the cruel part about being online. That looks oh. very nice, Fabrizio. Oh. And I mean, I'm just going to tell you a little thing that because we're team members, you also made limoncella this. Yes, I did. I'm just moving out of the way for a second. Uh, yes, I did. And um, it was amazing, uh, absolutely fantastic. So I just moved to get my uh, second bottle to wipe the surface here. Yes, it's fantastic. And on the subject of Lemoncello, you can, for example, add your favorite um, liqueur to this um, refreshing uh, coffee drink, uh, if you like, so you can spice it up. But I'm not doing that now. It's just <laughs> too long. Okay. But yeah, it's very nice. Uh, it's a nice uh, drink to start the day. And um, it takes nothing. Yeah, and in a martini glass, it just looks all the much better. <laughs> Brilliant. So um, just let me um, ask again, um, what was the name of this recipe and why did we pour it through the basket? It's called, it's called Café Shakerato. So it's like um, uh, a fra coffee frappe, let's say it in English, yeah? Okay. So the way, we, the reason why we strain it is because, because of the crashing that's going on in the thermomix uh, with the coffee and the ice, um, so there's lots of foam. Um, happening in there, so all we want is just to keep the coffee and leave the um, just a little bit on the foam, of the foam in the glass, but keep the most of it in the in the in the actual bowl. So okay. Just yeah, we just keep the coffee in the cup. Um, we skim the rest. Okay, brilliant, brilliant. I think that answers all the chat questions. But, uh, yeah, the reason why I use the simmering basket is to make the most of all the thermomix accessories. Um, yes. Go and get the cinnamon. Yeah. No, absolutely. Which, um, which I'll let you get on with the um, setting up the next recipe, which I know you're going to use our Thermomix friend um, as well. And I'll just answer um, Manuela's uh, question. Yes, there is. Um, all Thermomixes do have integrated scales in them. So those with TM5s, uh, which was the previous model, um, weigh in five grand increments, but the TM6, our latest model, actually weighs in uh, one gram increments. So um, for the purposes of sort of classes and online classes like this, um, my colleagues may have already pre-weighed the items just to speed up the class because nobody needs to see us weighing. But in a normal situation, we would just use our scales. Um, I mean, they're still gonna use the scales in, in fairness, but they may have pre-weighed it for um, the quickness of a, a class. Yes, so back to you, Fabrizio. Oh, okay, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Kida. Yes, so for the next recipe, the next recipe features some, uh, um, I would like to call them new uh, flavors. They're not very new for those um, living in Sicily, but um, this dish is probably unusual for the UK, probably not very much popular here, uh, not just yet anyway. It features a beautiful combination of um, aubergines and uh, saltfish. Now, saltfish is very popular in Sicily, if you happen to go to Sicily and you take the, the ferry from Calabria to actual Sicily, you see loads, loads of salt fish um, around you. Yeah, so there's loads there. That's why it's also very popular alongside the aubergine. So this dish comes from Sicily and it's actually become a national combination, the pasta with uh, salt fish and an aubergine. Uh, salt fish, um, believe me, you can actually find in the UK. Um, you can. Uh, it might not be easy, straightforward, but you can ask your fishmonger, uh, you can book it, or if you cannot find it, then you can um, replace it with um, halibut, or, or even uh, tuna if you like. If you're using tuna, cook it a bit less, but because tuna doesn't need to be cooked. Okay, it's a beautiful fish, uh, and it resembles the texture of the steak, and it's really nice. I've diced it, so it's all ready to be cooked. Um, Okay, so here we go. So what I'm doing, I'm putting some olive oil in the, in the thermomix bowl. Okay, and then I'll add some uh, garlic. Again, I'm having the recipes. I'm not doing a recipe for four people, um, but just uh, for two. So garlic love, and then um, some chilies, fresh chilies. 
And if you like to keep it spicy, then you can leave the, the seeds inside, otherwise just be seeded. Um, okay, then I put the measure on top. And then five seconds, speed five. Super easy. Once we've done that, we're going to saute the oil and the garlic for about three minutes in the thermomix, uh, a speed one. Now, as you can see, I've got here next to me a thermomix frame. Now, what is thermomix frame? Thermomix frame is uh, an accessory to your thermomix. It's designed to help you save more time, uh, cook twice as much um, in less time. So what I've got here is um, a bowl, as you can see, with, um, with water. So I'm going to use my thermomix frame to actually cook the pasta uh, instead of using the whole uh, uh, saucepan. But it's something that's easily done because uh, um, many people don't know that you can actually cook pasta in a thermomix, but you can. And you can do that in the thermomix as well as in the mix. So all I've done here is about 10 minutes, um, temperature is 100, and the speed is um, stir, or you can use um, one of those, and that's fine. So you do that to warm up the water, um, and you can add salt uh, when you do it. I didn't have it before, to be honest, but I love it now. That's absolutely fine. You've got three more minutes. Um, yeah. So once it's ready, we're going to open up the pasta to the thermomix paint while the sauce is cooking in the thermomix. So that, that way saves me so much time because instead of having um, the sauce cooked in there and then having to take another bowl and then cook the sauce in the, room, in the, the pasta and the thermomix, then I can do both at the same time. So it's a great time to say that. Okay, so I've got, for this recipe, I'm using a different kind of pasta, different shape. Um, to the one featured in the recipe, but that, that's absolutely fine. You can use your favorite one. And again, I'm only using 250 grams. If you are using the thermomix frame to cook pasta, we use one liter and 200 grams of water per 320 grams of pasta. So that's pretty much okay for my uh, 250. If you want to cook 500 grams of uh, of pasta and the thermomix, thermomix strength, then you can increase the water to one liter 500. So 100, 500, um, one liter 500 of uh, water uh, per uh, 500 grams of, uh, of pasta. So that's easy. And if you didn't know, you can also cook spaghetti uh, or linguine. So you need to get long um, because when we cook pasta, and you will see in a minute, um, the, uh, the lid doesn't stay on. So you can cook spaghetti, they will soften. Okay, well, I've got um, a few seconds left um, for my saute. I'll just show you. It's beautifully seasoning there. Yeah. The oil. Yeah. I can see Cheese. that. And the garlic. I wish you could smell it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that's always the cruel part about online, but um, <laughs> I'm sure, you know, these recipes will be very popular in the next couple yeah. of days after our class. Absolutely. So now what I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you what I'm going to put in the, in the bowl for the sauce, and then I'm, I'm going to Francesco for his recipe. So I'm going to add some capers. Now these capers are salted, but you rinse them in water and get rid of the salt. Uh, I'm going to add some sun-dried tomatoes, uh, which are roughly chopped. Um, about eight uh, for two people, and then of course the aubergines. Okay, so the aubergines, uh, what I've done with the aubergines, and uh, the way we do that uh, for about half an hour is to get rid of the bitterness of the aubergines. So we put half an hour, the aubergines, sea salt, uh, raw salt rather, and then we them in water and then flat dry. So these ones have been done, ready. Okay. And then some pine nuts. So everything goes in. As you can see, there is no passata, there is no cherry tomatoes, there's no chopped tomatoes. All there is is just the uh, sun dried tomatoes. Um, and these are the ingredients for our, for our um, sauce. Um, 
I'm going to put the water, uh, the pasta in the water, and then we'll be a couple of seconds. But I think Francesco is ready um, for his recipe. So I'll see you soon. Perfect. And just before I um, move on to Francesco, I know we mentioned uh, the TM uh, friend. Um, the wonderful thing about the TM friend, and we have a lot of TM5 and TM6 customers on this uh, class today, is that you can actually use the friend with both the TM5 and the TM6 bowls. So they are compatible um, with both as well. And I can give you information about purchasing a friend if that is of interest later. But yes, let's move on to um, Francesco now, and um, who is a new advisor on our team and um, see how he's doing. Hello. I think you're still on uh, mute, Francesco. I'm on now. Can you hear me yes, now? Yes, you can. Okay. Hello. I was saying uh, hello and buongiorno, the Italian way, everyone. Um, right, let, let's dive into it. What I'm, I'm going to prepare today is something called the Amatriciana sauce. Uh, Amatriciana is, is a, a part of the region of the um, center of Italy near Rome. And the, this sauce can be used both as to um, condiment for the pasta, or also if you in the barbecue time, if you want to make some bruschetta, you can actually put the sauce on top of the, uh, uh, the bruschetta bread. The recipe is uploaded on Cookie Do already. As you know, 70,000 recipes are available on Cookie Do. So I'm just gonna press start cooking. The first step is asking me for 40 gram of pecorino cheese um, to put into the, the bowl. Now, like Ankita was saying, it's already easy, but I'm gonna show you how it's easy to wait. And a bit of a tip on saving money. I don't buy grated Parmesan or pecorino anymore because it's more expensive. What I buy is just chunks of it, and then I grate it in my thermomix. So let's start with the 40 grams of pecorino. I'm just gonna put it in the bowl like that. And then I do next, I'll put the measuring cup back next. And I'm gonna put on speed 10 for 15 seconds. So we had questions where people are noticing that their thermomixes seem a little bit uh, quiet. You know, when we're grinding, it seems quieter online than it is in their kitchen. Um, but I guarantee that it's all the same. It's probably just sounds a little quieter when we are doing it online. I just want to show you, I don't know if you can see how we perfectly grated in 15 seconds, just the pecorino. And what I normally do, I do batches of um, Parmesan cheese or pecorino. I'll put them in, the, in a bag and I'll freeze them. So whenever I need to uh, get them out uh, for the day, for the week, it's already prepared. I do this kind of once a week just to um, go ahead in my preparation. So I'll put everything into a bowl and set it aside. And now one chili pepper. Again, those comes from, my mom always gives them to me when I go to, uh, to Italy. I've got the, the usual uh, grape of chilies and I let them dry and then I use them for my recipes. And as I grind everything, this is what I do, again, once every six or seven months, whenever they're dry, I'll just grind them and put in a bowl, which is much easier too. But I wanna show you how easy it is just to put the uh, chili peppers in there. Next. Three seconds on speed seven. Now I have just grains of the chili. I'll do next. I'm going to scrub a bit on the, at the bottom, that's done. Next, 20 grams of oil, virgin olive oil, and the scale is there by the gram, like Kita said, so very easy to measure quantities. I'll do next again. And it's now asking 150 grams. You, you can either go for the guanciale, which is the, the um, again, part of the, uh, the, the pork, or if you cannot find it in Waitrose or in some of the Italian shops, uh, the pancetta in cubes is more than, is, is fine as well. 150 grams. Okay. 
And what is the flavor difference um, between guanciale and pancetta? The guanciale is, is a tiny bit more smoky and hard. Uh, the pancetta is more soft uh, and more sweet. Okay, good. But it, it's, a, it's a tiny, tiny difference. Uh, it's just saying if you want to stick to the proper Italian uh, recipe, you should go for the guanciale. Uh, which you, uh, you can still find in places like Waitrose or Cado um, and in some of the Italian uh, delicatessen. I'll do next. And it's now, it's gonna um, put five minutes, 100, under, uh, 100 degrees uh, for kind of making nice and roasty and flavory the, the oil that we put in there with the, uh, with the grease of the, uh, of the guanciale. That's for four minutes and 52. I don't know if there is any question why we, why we raise you? No questions at the moment. But um, as we have some TM5 customers, I thought I would just say, I know I introduced you as a new advisor, but Francesco, you were a TM5 customer and have recently joined us on the Earn and Demonstrate program. So why don't you tell us about how you earned your uh, TM6? Oh, so first of all, the, uh, there are only two countries in the world where the name Thermomix is called Bimbi. Those two countries are Italy, Italy and Portugal. And Bimbi is huge in Italy. If you think that in any wedding list or uh, any people getting married or leaving home, like students, uh, first on the list of, uh, of the bucket list and wishes would be the Bimbi uh, and get one of those. So I knew Bimbi before moving to London. All my uh, mom's friends and friends had one. So when I met Ankita, and I think it was four or five years ago, roughly, um, I, I went for, on a, for a demo, I knew already that I wanted it so much, so I purchased the, uh, the TM5. But when I, when I looked at the TM6, which came on uh, after uh, two or three years, again, I really wanted it. Uh, so one of the options that Ankita gave me was, if you don't want to purchase in there and there, and if you have a, a passion for, uh, you know, cooking and demonstrating and making people happy uh, about your food, why don't you join the Urban and Demonstrate, which I did. So with the Earn and Demonstrate, you become an advisor. You go through a, a training program. On the first day, you get a brand new TM6 machine. And then you have three months to sell four items, um, four, um, four machines. And once they do that, the TM6 is yours. Plus you start accruing all the other points, permissions, and all the rest of the, uh, of the proper advisor job. If you don't uh, sell four by the 90 days, you do get a discount if you wish to go ahead and purchase it. And if you, like, if you sell one, you will get 25%. If you sell two, 50, or you can decide to give it back and stick to your TM5. Uh, and I've, I've, I've sold my four, I think I'm keeping the first um, 45 days, 60 days. Yeah, so I was gonna say five or six weeks. So whilst we give people 12 weeks, um, most people um, sell it much, much quicker, but um, with the support of, of um, the team, but it's a wonderful thing, a way to upgrade with your time rather than your, your money. So um, definitely we are recruiting all over um, London and the UK for people who are elsewhere. And we can tell you more about that program if it is um, of interest. But have we finished, are we still got time in our cooking? Yes. <laughs> one, one, one minute and 54. And so all I wanted to add was, once that this beautiful machine becomes a member of the family, uh, you will learn more and more. There are, you know, from the simplest recipes, uh, like, you know, you can make a coffee, you can make a cappuccino, you can use it as a kettle, um, up to the very complicated and elaborated recipes like the um, Michelin star chefs have in their kitchen. Once they you know what it looks like, you'll be able to spot it in some of the TV program, like in MasterChef and some of the kitchens uh, that you have uh, in, uh, in some restaurants. Uh, and you, you, you can do anything, you know, it's got more than 16, 17 different functionalities. What I've done, I've chucked all my other appliances uh, away and I'm just using the Thermomix or the b, &B if you want to call it the Italian way. That's wonderful. Now, people have spotted that you have a slider under that. Um, I've explained to people what it is, but could you just perhaps demonstrate how you're pulling, you know, how you lift your slider delicately while you are still cooking? Sure. The um, 
first of all, you, you don't need to have a slider because the, the thermal mix is robust and solid. Uh, I did it for a bit of a um, um, you know, practicality because it's very easy to slide like this rather than drag it the thermal mix. Not that whilst you're cooking, you need to drag the thermal mix, but this is what it looks like and it's easy to turn as well. Yeah. I, I think um, you know, Thermo Volwerk has just released a slider um, and it's going to be available for customers to buy um, at some point. Um, I believe the one that Francesco has is the one I have as well, which was made by an independent party. Um, like we were saying, um, it's not essential, but sometimes when you have your Thermomix under a counter mm -hmm. and you move it or you do have um, young children or other people that use your Thermomix as well. It's a nice accessory to have, but not a essential, but I will give more details in the follow-up um, as well. Okay, so we look like we've sauteed that. Yes, and I'm such a shame that you cannot be here and smell how wonderful it is, the pancetta, the guanciale with the oil, as you can see, it's all sauteed and nice crisp. So I go to the next step which is adding um, 400 grams of uh, passata. I normally use mutti, but again, this is my, my preference. You can use any passata or chopped tomatoes. A little tip from my grandmother, bless her, looking at down from sky to us, whenever you put in tomatoes or passata, always wash a bit with some water, whatever is left on in the bottle, and then just add it, because that dilutes the, um, sometimes the acid or the bitterness. Okay, that's done. The next step, a bit of salt. Just a pinch, because the guanciale will be quite salty itself. The lead, the measuring cup. Next. So it's asking now for 15 minutes at uh, 100 degrees. And I'll go with that now. And that's it for the sauce. So I think I'm going to go back to Fabrizio whilst my um, sauce is cooking. And all you do then, you put your, uh, um, your boiling water and the pasta. Or, like I said, if you're making, a, if you are in a barbecue and you want to start making your bread, as soon as the sauce is done, you can pull the sauce on the brisket. Wonderful! Not, Thank you so much. So let's get back to Fabrizio. Let me just find him. There you go. I can smell. I can smell it from here. I love. I love the It's one of my favorite Italian dishes. Um, right. Um, just um, wanted to add something else to the uh, slider. Uh, I know that Chia was asking about that. Yes, as Francesco said, it's not essential. As also Chia said, it's not an essential gadget. Um, but if you have it, it's always handy um, to use it. Um, I've got mine, I haven't got it here on the counter because there's no space for it. But when I usually have my thermomix, I've got mine as well. Um, it's very important. Um, because um, not only it helps you um, move the thermomix easily, but also it preserves the life of the, of the scales. If many of you don't know, or some of you don't know, um, the digital scale that comes with the thermomix is, um, is got three uh, sensors, which are at the bottom of the thermomix. I can't read mine now, but it's three little feet, uh, the black feet of the thermomix at the actual scale sensors. So, if you want to drag the thermomix uh, back and forth, um, or right and left, uh, on your kitchen counter, what will happen is that both uh, sensors will get damaged and uh, the scales may suffer a little damage. So, you can prevent that from happening by using, always using the handle. There is a, a handle here, a silver handle at the back. Uh, from lifting the thermomix, I can do that now. You just use the handle to lift it. But do not drag it on the wall. Yeah? Mm -hmm. um, but again, as an extra protection, if you want to get a slider, yes, you need to get a slider so you avoid um, dragging the thermomix and preserve, obviously, the rules of the life of the, of the digital scales. So that's uh, an extra tip for you. Okay? So always use the handle. 
Now, what I've got here, um, you use it, you put it for sort of, um, cooking time and you get it in the packet. The baby timing, always put it two minutes less because we like it and and it's nice to, you know, to keep the pasta to be actually fine. Um, I've added salt fish, um, I've added a little um, drop of wine, white wine, um, to the sauce. Um, so as I, said, as I said before, the sauce is that salt fish, aubergine, chop, um, chopped uh, sun dried tomatoes, a uh, pine nuts, um, garlic, and oil. Uh, that's about it, not a side, not chopped tomatoes, no nothing. Um, but well, the next thing I'm going to do is, is the fresh um, mint leaves, and that will really add some nice freshness to this um, summer dish um, and will give a nice, a nice touch. So basically, I've got two of them going uh, the pasta and, um, and the sauce together in a, in a serving bowl. Now, just a tip um, for those of you who are recipe, or indeed any other Italian recipe, uh, and mix, and indeed uh, a pasta dish. Uh, when you use it, when you cook in pasta, please, please, um, let, um, keep some of the water, the cooking water, um, to mix that with yourself. Okay, that will help uh, the pasta combine um, with, uh, with the actual sauce. Um, getting rid of all the water is a normal. <laughs> okay, so uh, don't be tempted. Just reserve a little bit, just a couple of spoons um, of the cooking water will help. Um, Get all the sauce and the pasta binding together and we will deliver excellent um, results. That's what I'm going to do now. The other thing I'm going to do, and I'll show you when the uh, time comes, is that I'm going to drain the pasta using the, the aroma as well. So we've got it, we need to make the most of it. Um, some customers, um, I see them when I go to the for the work in this, they hope the aroma is not to be seen. It's locked in a cupboard. And I always tell them if you don't have it um, in full view, you will never use it. So it's always handy when you have the topics at home, um, do it like I do, and keep it on top of your thermomics. Um, the more you see it, the more you will use it, and the more you make the most of it. Okay, so to demonstrate that today, I will bring the pasta using the Devarona, just like I did before using the Simmering basket. Um, as you may see, there's a little uh, bubble of water coming out from the thermomix drain. Uh, sorry, the camera doesn't catch that. But yeah, that's the reason being is that we keep the measuring cup off when we're cooking pasta, um, so we avoid any over um, spillage of water uh, or the drain or the thermomix. Yeah. So remember, if you're cooking pasta and thermomix, or the lid goes off. So, um, the pasta can cook easily without overflow. Uh, really there. And just for Jimmy, just to come over to you, I've got two more minutes here. If we could take perhaps a couple of questions, I've got one minute and 10 seconds left, and I'm quickly going to rinse the bowl and then I'm ready for the ice cream. So I don't know if you take to or for this, if you want to uh, field okay, if questions, you can, uh... yes, I can field any questions. I mean, we had a question um, from Kurshid who asked, "What is passata?" Because obviously, not in all countries passata is available. But we had a very wonderful customer, uh, Monica, say that it's actually liquidized tomatoes, and you can easily make it um, in your thermomix by blending it. And actually, yes, absolutely. I mean, the, the whole reason why we have thermomixes is that we don't need to be making these kind of things. So um, by making uh, your own passata you're actually using your Thermomix even more. Um, many of our customers are muted, but if anyone does want to, um, ah, yes, um, someone else has asked, Francesco mentioned that he got rid of other kitchen appliances. <laughs> can he elaborate? Well, I can probably elaborate in the, you know, on behalf of my team, we literally don't need any other appliances because your Thermomix um, is a blender, it's a rice cooker, it can juice, um, it can emulsify, um, 
you know, obviously it has a slow cooker function. Um, you know, um, it's a Excellent. grinder for Parmesan Excellent. grinder. So let me ask, I mean, Tanya has just moved over from um, Mexico and she's just setting up home in London. So let me ask you a different question, um, Tanya. What were you thinking of buying? And let us tell you whether you need it or not. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> just, uh, it's nice that you remember. But yeah, I'm just building my home. And mm -hmm. I usually in Mexico have like thousands, like pans, uh, the kettler, the... Um, blender i'm just thinking a lot uh, but yeah i mean i also bought it thinking about like not buying not having to buy so many things and because of the space that is limited just yeah. like you know so so basically i'm in the moment of thinking what else do i need for my kitchen besides the thermomix um i mean to be honest i don't think you need very much um it, when you're setting up your home and obviously because you're setting it up from uh, from scratch um the Thermomix does have a kettle, it does, but I do tend to find most people buy, you know, a, a kettle and a toaster, um, you know, just because they match and they're using that so often, um, but you don't need to buy a kettle. Um, and I think everything else your Thermomix should be absolutely fine for. Um, and obviously, you know, yes, we have people saying here they're using their Thermomix to, to grind the coffee beans. Um, as well, or your grind, dry, um, dry spices. So it truly is an appliance that has 20 appliances in one. So I think you're, besides the weight, which is going to be a little bit hard, because um, we currently have a four to six weeks wait time. But equally, for anyone who's thinking of upgrading or purchasing, we also have a very, very um, great customer offer, which is a free bowl and 0%. Um, and we have Manuela who's asking, is it okay to prepare bread dough? Yes, absolutely. We're not making bread today, but bread dough is something that we make a lot. Um, you are weighing all your ingredients and then kneading the dough and then obviously baking it in an oven. So, um, yes, bread is something that you will do. And we have Fiona Lichmore, who is a Thermomix customer and says it's brilliant for cakes too. So yes, um, I mean, you can actually, that's gone privately to me, um, but you can read the many customers here who are using it multi um, times. And some of us are not just on our first Thermomix, but we are on our second or third model um, or multiple models. So you can see that Thermomix fans not just have one, but they have many as well. Um, yeah, pizza dough, Friday nights and everything else. But I think Fabrizio is ready. So let's go back to him. So the sauce is cooked. Everything is nicely blended together. So as you said, as I said, there's no, there's no sauce as such, there's no chopped tomatoes on the satin. And on the, on the topic of the extra bowl, yes, as you can see, I make the most of my extra bowls. Um, and they're so handy. So the, the current offer for the free extra bowl is one not to miss out. Don't miss out if you don't have a thermomix just yet, because you will, you will love this uh, free £169 gadget that comes your way, accessory comes your way. So the sauce is ready, I'm going to put it in a, in a large serving bowl. And all I've done, I've added some um, uh, the mint leaves I showed you before. So that will give some nice hints of freshness to the dish. There we go. Then I've got the pasta, which was cooked in the thermomix right? That's what you can see. Okay. And then I'm going to. Bring the pasta in the, in the coma using another bowl, as you can see. So I don't have to go to the sink, so you can watch me, and I'm using the Varoma. Um, now, Fabrizio, do you really do that when you're at home, or are you like me, where you put the, the Roma in the sink and you pour a pasta in much more aggressively? Well, I'll, as I say, as I said now, I'll do it so you can watch me. I don't have to leave you, but <laughs> um, there are there are. As I said to you, I'll receive serve some water from the cooking water, yeah, in there. Um, the truth is that if 
abuse the, the Varoma for stealing and stuff like that. I've got it going. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely, I'll do that. Uh, if not, yes, probably I wouldn't um, really just use the Varoma for that. But if it's been used, yes. So the pasta is beautifully drained, as mm. you can see. That goes in the bowl, in the serving bowl. But the other, um, now we're talking about the Varoma for this purpose, but I also use, when I make roast potatoes, see, we just combine it together now. Um, when I make roast potatoes, uh, the Zemo mix, you steam them um, in the Varoma, and then you use the Varoma, you know when we shake them in the, in, um, in a tray, you can use the Varoma to shake them, so they you get nice, uh, those lovely, um, rough, yes. And and in fact, that's exactly what I do. I yeah. you when when we use the blade peeler um, cover, um, yeah. and I'm grating my potatoes or beetroot or any of the vegetables that I've peeled. I use the Varoma to wash them. So Absolutely. it is very multifunctional. And I know we're advisors, and we tend to use them a lot more. But it's really about encouraging people to to use the accessories, you know, <laughs> more and more. Yeah, that's that's the reason why I thought I'll use the, um, the simmering basket for the coffee and the Varoma for the wood, for the, for the pasta, uh, because it's nice to um, to make the most of all the accessories and components. I mean, on the other hand, if I didn't use the Varoma, I'd have to use um, a colander anyway, so might as well use the Thermomix accessories. And there's my pasta. Oh, that's beautiful. beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Nice and fresh. The meat is a lovely freshness, and um, the fish is also beautiful. Brilliant. Um, Do you remember to photograph that before you eat it? <laughs> <laughs> and. I'll go into that. <laughs> you do that, and we will go to uh, Francesco, who is I'm going ready. to be making our ice cream. And I just um, the. Uh, the Amatriciana sauce is now in a lovely Tupperware um, container and it will go in the freezer for this week, one of the, uh, one of the nights. So let's, let's dive into the uh, dessert uh, and the ice cream. I'll just press on next. It's asking for 80 grams of coffee, which I have like Fabrizio from this morning prepared. Uh, now, th this is interesting how you can personalize and bespoke your recipes. Uh, the next step would be 10 grams of rum. I don't drink, I don't drink alcohol, so I'll skip this step. And also be able to personalize the cookie dough recipe online. So next time I'm making the same ice cream, it will not be asking anymore for that 10 grams of rum. So you can chop, shake, um, and, and make th different things when on your, uh, on your cookie dough recipes. So I'll skip this one. 30 grams of cacao. And that's done. I'll put the lid on. Next, and we've got 30 seconds on speed two. And going back to the question about making, you know, kneading and dough, I've got a great passion about baking and bread. So I love experimenting different type of breads, like with rosemary, with different seeds, with different flour. And um, the thermal mix is amazing because first of all, you can select a particular recipe, but then once they get used to what type of bread you like, uh, you can just mix the flours that you can just, just mix. The meat comes perfect. You can also rest it in the Varoma through a new function, function called fermentation, because you can also do yogurt. Uh, with the thermal mix, or you can rest and raise your bread uh, with the fermentation mode uh, for your the, the, the dough that you just made. So I'm transferring this sauce into a bowl because I will need it later. The spatula would become your best friend and is a spatula designed and shaped for the, uh, all the different corners of the bowl. You shouldn't be licking the spatula with the chocolate, so I won't do that. 
I'm going to put this accessory in, which is called the butterfly, and it's very useful and is used for every time you need to uh, whisk faster and get more air incorporated. Uh, so if you making the egg whites or you're making something that requires not only the, the, the uh, uh, speed of the blades, but also more air to be uh, incorporated. That's when you use the butterfly, which goes in there. Four eggs. Twenty grams of sugar. I think we deserve a bit of sugar on the sunday. Lift back on. Ten minutes on speed four. So ten seconds. Ten seconds. We have three dials on the display. The first one is the, the minutes and the time. The second one is the temperature. And the third one is the speed of the blades, which can go clockwise or anti-clockwise, if you make a lot of results of, or something that you, want, you don't want the blades to cut, uh, but just to nicely steer and uh, go with the kind of the flow of the, the recipe. Sorry, it, was, it was 10 minutes, so I'm pleased. I don't know if you want to, whilst I'm doing this, uh, again, take your questions and explain what we have at the moment, and then we can finish the, uh, the ice cream. Yes, of course. So um, we've touched very briefly on um, created recipes, which is um, the difference between Cookie Do 2.0 and cookie do 3.0. So for all of you who have recent purchases of TM6, you should be on 3.0. Um, for previous TM31 customers who we have and TM5 customers, um, there is a, a difference between your subscription of 2.0 to 3.0. Now, the difference is that with 3.0, you can do something called creative recipes. And um, the easiest way, like Francesco was saying, or even Fabrizio, is previously we used to have a function called notes, where you could write a note on the recipe and say, actually, I like three cloves of garlic instead of one, or I don't like the chili, or I don't like the rum in this recipe. So you could add it as a note. Um, with created um, recipes, you therefore um, are able to amend your recipes or even create your own. So um, for example, I'm a big Otolenghi fan and I can thermomix a lot of my um, creative recipes from Otolenghi into a thermomix style um, and just then use guided cooking for the, the recipes. Now, with your purchase of Thermomix, you get six months uh, Cookie Do subscription absolutely free. And um, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people ask me this. Um, do I really need it? Will I like it? Um, and, you know, is the subscription justified? Um, and I always say, well, you have, you know, actually one month free, even as a non-user, but six months with your Thermomix subscription. Anyone who is on pre-order get an extra two months because of the inconvenience of having to wait. So that's uh, nine months cookie do subscription. And believe me, as someone who once had a TM31 and just used books, um, when the cookie do was out in 2015, we had about 42,000 recipes. At the moment, we're at about 82,000, which means you can make something literally every day and never have to repeat it. Um, obviously, we all like our, um, our, our recipes, but... Uh, the fact that you can use these guided cooking and, you know, just put your ingredients in and then say what you want is quite amazing. Now, we do get quite a lot of questions for um, how to create your recipes. And whilst today isn't the uh, format for that, 
um, maybe I will create a video and put it online on how to uh, do creative recipes. But while we're waiting for Francesco, does any of our clients use creative recipes? Um, please feel free to unmute yourself and chat. I've, I've started doing it. Oh, Lisa, hi. Yes. Hi. I have created? started that. Oh, no, I had, in fact, it was just changing a scone recipe. Mm -hmm. but I didn't really get on. I, I think I need to sort of teach myself a little bit better because I wasn't that great at it and I stopped. But I really want to go because there's so many recipes where I want to do things differently. Like I was making a risotto the other day and I wanted to, when I put the wine in, I wanted to cook it for longer. So I just think you have your little own twists on a recipe and I, I really want to do that. So it'd be fantastic if you did a video. That would be so yes. helpful. Absolutely, absolutely. I'd really like to get good at it. I would like to get better. And even us, we are still learning. We are still learning. So it is a matter of, um, you know, the first time I did um, a recipe was actually a, it's a TM31 recipe where, because I found that book was just delicious. Um, and so I was putting TM31 recipes onto the TM5 and TM6 um, because they're just, family favorites um uh there's one particular tomato sauce which i use just again like um francesco made you know a sauce and then put it in his fridge for you know busy weeknights um i i make it for a tomato sauce which is my base for pizza pasta um and and, and lasagnas um, but also there's a uh, chocolate chip cookie recipe, which is mostly oats rather than flour and sugar that I have um, and I make literally weekly. So I have converted that. But let me, <laughs> like I said, I have a little time on my hands these days because I'm housebound. Um, so, yes, let me try and make a video of me creating a um, created recipe. And um, I'll, I'll put that online. Um, but yes, it's all about trial and error. Um, and, you know, even though we are advisors, we are still users, we still make mistakes and we still need to improve on them as well. Um, and everything is just about um, editing um, as well. And um, oh, yes, something that I didn't mention that uh, Monica has mentioned. Um, actually, she's Paul Dominique here, but um, she's my, I know her as Monica, is that she's talking about the fact that Cookie Do also has um, all the different languages. So um, Italian, Spanish, French, um, po Poland, Polish, Portuguese, absolutely. And um, Ian's got his hand up. So hi, Ian. Hi, Ankita, how are you doing? Day? Yes, yeah, really good, thank you. Good. Um, I just wanted to check, can I use creative recipes and can I create my own with my TM5 or do I need a TM6 for that? No, you can still create them with your TM5. It's all, to, it's got to do with your thermo, um, your cookie do subscription rather than your Thermomix um, awesome. model. Great. I misunderstood um, the marketing then in that case because I thought yeah, I had yeah. to have a six. No, 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 no. You can still have your, your TM5 um, as oh, well. Perfect. I will, I will um, look into that. Then. I'm ready for my next steps. Okay, brilliant. All right. Let's so, spotlight just, to you. I've just removed the butterfly uh, for the next step. I'm now going to put 250 grams of mascarpone. Again, you can find mascarpone anywhere. Um, all the major supermarkets, the Italian delicatessen. Okay. It's a spatula because we don't like food wasting. Back on, I think for 30 seconds, yes. Two things that not many people will know about cookie do. Um, there's, a, there's a functionality where, there's a function where you, once you got all your recipes selected, they will go into your basket for the shopping. And then if you are like me that does the shopping online, the there will be a link within the app, which will go straight to your supermarket of choice, could be Sainsbury, Tesco, Ocado, and it will fill your trolley with the exact quantity of ingredients that you need for the recipes that you have planned for the week. So that's, that's an amazing feature. Uh, we know exactly how many eggs and how many 
uh, things you need and it will prefill your basket and your trolley at the supermarket. So one, one of the things that not many people know and it's an amazing one. We're now putting 80 grams of um, Savoyardi, or I think it's called Ladyfinger over here. Uh, sponge fingers, I think. Sponge oh, fingers. Yeah. Now I'm going to show you a new thing. Whenever you're doing a, um, um, a sorbet or ice cream, um, we use the spatula just to, again, help the move within the bowl. So I'll show you how we do it. For 15 seconds, speed two. I'll put the spatula in. And I'll help the biscuits to blend nice. We're now going to put half of the bowl in this glass jar. Hope you can still see. This is the chocolate that we made before. And you can have your kids playing with these, making drawings or like these, because once that will be frozen, it will give that effect of chocolate mixed with the rest of the cream. One of the things about this ice cream is that um, you can literally take it out of the free freezer and eat it pretty much straight away. Uh, whereas some other ice creams you have to wait uh, a few minutes. It's ready, it's nice and creamy. Yeah, it looks very nice with the sponge fingers in, the chocolate, the mascarpone. The mascarpone is the one that we use for tiramisu as well. It's one of the nicest and sweetest thing that we make. And then the rest of the chocolate on top. I'm actually looking forward to coming back home tonight just to have the ice cream. I'm up for a barbecue today, but I will look forward to my ice cream tonight. And I do live near you, Francesco. Sorry? <laughs> I do live near you. You do, you do, and you have a neck broken, so um, you will be not uh, team, team, team work. <laughs> okay, and that's it. All I do now, I'll just cover it, put it in the freezer for eight hours, just about the time to go for my barbecue and come back. And tonight I'll have my ice cream. Wow, that looks delicious. That and that's it from me. Brilliant, brilliant. Well, thank you so much um, for those recipes um, and, and all the hints and tips. I'm going to open it up to the... Um, to the, to the customers now, um, but I'm just gonna ask one thing first. If we could all turn on our cameras for just one second, if you're okay, I can take a one photo of my um, screen. That would be really helpful. Um, and I'm just gonna do gallery photo, if we could. That'd be great. That's there and if anyone has any questions feel free to to shout or not shout but ask um thank you i just want to add something um just a couple of things uh, yes. first on the uh, tiramisu ice cream is amazing it's a beautiful recipe it's great uh, because it's a different way of enjoying tiramisu <laughs> it's not yeah it's not a traditional one on the topic of the creative recipes um it's also uh, worth mentioning that if someone is not very comfortable or confident in um, creating recipes straight away, uh, you can start. Obviously, the first um, thing to do, obviously, is to practice cooking the recipes, because that's what we learn. Uh, for example, the chopping takes this XYZ amount of um, 
time and speed and stuff like that. But also we have the amazing uh, feature of the imported recipes. So we can actually import recipes from websites that we like. And add to the links. So what I've done, for example, I've looked at some websites. It, it could be just waiters, for example, if you like. Um, they have recipes, so you can um, um, import that recipe to your Thermomix, and then you can have a go at adapting it to your Thermomix. That way you learn, you're learning how to create a recipe, and then you can move on to create your own recipe. But that's a nice way of uh, getting started. And you'll find and that again in, the, in my recipes in the create the recipe section it gives you the option to import create. when you go to your recipes it will tell you um, recipe created by let's say Fabrizio a recipe imported by Fabrizio so you know which one you've created yourself and which one you imported and adapted to the mix. and also don't forget that you can you can put some um, filters uh, by uh, how difficult you want to select a recipe, or if you have a couple of ingredients, like some lentils, and that's it, you, will, you can select all the recipes by that. If you've got allergies, you can search for gluten-free, lactose-free, um, vegan, vegetarian, and for one, two, four people, so even you know, people single or people uh, on their own, they, they can still enjoy uh, the recipes on Thermomix. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So thank you so much for that. So just as a recap, um, I will send all the recipe links of what we have cooked today um, by email. Um, I will also edit the, the video and have that online for anyone who arrived late or missed any um, parts of it and like to rewatch. Um, if you do have um, any questions, please feel free to, to come back to me or the advisor who invited you, which presumably is one of our team because this was a, um, a, a team class. Um, and let me just follow up with, um, you know, our, our offer this month is literally the best we have ever had. And I'm saying that as an advisor of 14 years, we are giving a free bowl um, with any TM6 purchase. And that is in one payment. If anyone is interested in upgrading or purchasing a Thermomix on the 0% finance, that is at 12, 24 and 36 months. Um, and in that case, the bowl is half price. Now we normally do a 9.9 .9 APR and even paying half price bowl, you're still getting um, the bowl at a cheaper price than what you would normally pay. We do have a four to six week, week lead time. Um, and that is just because of global shortages. Um, but I'm very, very excited to, to say that this is really our best um, offer ever. And there's a price rise next month. So from the 5th of July, the Thermomix price is going up. Um, as independent advisors, we don't know what that is. So um, I'm just kind of warning everyone and lots of people should be pre-warned anyway. Um, so please do come back to your advisors with any questions. And if you have enjoyed this class, please refer your friends. Um, absolutely no pressure or obligation um, for any purchases from any of our advisors but it's a nice opportunity to see um, the demo see um, the latest models and also for any referrals we do now um, officially offer referral gifts and this is something from the head office but many of you know that many of our team already give referral gifts so it's almost a double um, gift um, for that but thank you so much. And um, I hope to see you at another online or in-person class. And if any is one with a Thermomix, whether it's the TM6 or with a TM5 would like to join the team, please let me know. Um, all of our members work full time and we purely do it for the, the love and the passion for this business and to meet some wonderful people. So, um, you know, it's it's a great opportunity to learn more about the Thermomix. But thank you so much for your time. And um, I will stay on for any questions, because um, but uh, hopefully we will see you at our next class soon. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye.
Thank you, sir. Can I ask a question? Yes, of course you can. Okay. Um, you talked about um, Cookie Do 2 and Cookie Do 3. Yes. How do we get on to Cookie Do 3? Because I didn't know there were two options. No, it, it's basically when you're uh, cookie do as a TM5 customer, when your TM5 um, subscription finishes um, or you need to upgrade, there is an option um, as a TM5 customer that you stay on at £30 for TM for cookie do two or you upgrade to cookie do three um, okay. um, as a TM5 customer. For anyone with, I think TM3. Uh, Cookie Do 3 came out in November of last year. So anyone with a who purchased a Thermomix TM6 post November um, last year will automatically be on TM uh, Cookie Do 3. So for the TM5, what is the difference in the subscriptions? It's 10 pounds. Okay. Thank you.